Let's just stand this morning with the Lord in prayer. I had an email uh, concerning Brother Boyd. He uh, caught a virus and they had given him stuff and sent him home. And then uh, he, after a week, I think, or something like that, he had to go back to the hospital. And he's in dire shape right now with that virus. So if we can keep him in prayer. Uh, is there other prayer requests if we would go to the Lord? Yes, sister. Unspoken, yes. Your sister. She's in surgery this morning. She broke her wrist. Okay. All right. Let's all lift up our voice together. Heavenly Father, as we c- let's remember Sister Jan as well. Heavenly Father, as we approach thy throne of grace, Lord, we thank you, Lord, that we can approach thee through the blood of Jesus Christ. And Lord, as we come to thee this morning, Lord, you've seen the request, Lord. I know that you know every thought of that of every human vessel on the planet, but Lord. I know, Lord, that you're concerned about thy people. And, Lord, the request that we've put before thee, I pray, Lord, that you would move upon them at this time. Lord, we have come here to praise thee and to worship thee, Lord. We remember thy nation, Israel. We ask this now in that precious name, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen and amen. Can we see it this morning and have Brother Paul come lead us in a song service? everyone it's good to see everybody out this morning beautiful people there is always enough of God's mercy There is always enough of His love When your well has run dry He will supply When the road seems long and rough There is
What more can I ask for? Jesus, what more can I ask for than Him? He's my shelter. on me Holy Spirit Oh 
stupid the week before. I uh, had a pretty bad flu, and it just got to a point where I'm like, I'm going to go see the doctor. And when I was talking to him, he's like, dude, I had very bad headaches, like really bad for about five days straight. And uh, he's like, do you have pain anywhere else? And I just kind of thought for a second, and my uh, one of my molars in the front right side was actually throbbing. I was like, you know, I have a tooth, actually, that's been kind of, I'm sure it's giving me a problem with it, which definitely got to look at that. Like, it might be worse than you think. So from there, I went right to the dentist, and uh, when I described what was going on, they took me in right away, and they uh, ended up doing a, what they call a pulpectomy. They just kind of hollow out the tooth and take the living tissue, and I guess it was in really bad shape. So he gave me uh, some Tylenol 3 and kind of went home, but it was still really, really painful. And uh, I think it was the, the following morning, or maybe two days after, actually, I think about it. Uh, I woke up, and I think I slept on this side, and he kind of told me, he's like, if you can, don't sleep on it. So when I woke up, it was so painful that I was, I was actually crying. Like, I don't know if I felt the pain like that for a very long time. The night before, Sarah had prayed over me, and it was just really killing me. And I just kind of sat there in bed, and I rolled over on my left side, and I just kind of prayed a little bit, and I was just asking God, you know, please, if you can, you can touch my body. And I just felt like a, a presence kind of come into the room. And uh, I just kept praying, and I felt it was getting stronger. And then a song came to my heart. It was... Uh, you're my strength when I am weak. You're, you're my healer and all that. I forget the song exactly, but I started singing it. And as I sang it, I just kind of put my arm up like this, and I'm on my left side, and I was just singing and just reaching out, and I felt the warmth come down my arm. Praise God. And it just walked down over my jaw. Praise God. Number eight in the blue book. <laughs> Brenda, do you want to try that one? Number eight. Lead. 
his people out of Pharaoh's land. They faced a dark red sea that crossed them to dry land. He's the God that talked to Moses while upon the mountain. He's the God that turned a rock into a water fountain. Yes, he
have a song this morning, Elijah. Thank you, Lord. Jesus got all my life and he won't let me go. Oh, Jesus got into my heart, he got into my soul. Oh, oh, I used to be all oh, so sad, but now I'm free and grand. Oh, Jesus got all my life and he won't let me Sometimes I remember I used to be living in sin. Oh, I tried to be and free, but it wasn't within. Oh, I fooled a lot of friends of mine. They thought I had some peace of mind, but I didn't have it until I opened it. Oh, Jesus got all my right, and he won't let me go. Oh, Jesus got into my heart, he got into my soul. Oh, I wish to be all oh, so sad, but now I'm free and grand. Just a little bit of fool, a fool in the round. Oh, you try to have your right to right, but you ain't gaining ground. Oh, why not try the war today? Just ask him in your heart to stay, and you'll find his what to be the greatest thing that you'll ever find. Amen. Amen. Oh, Jesus got all my life and he won't let me go. Oh, Jesus got into my heart. He got into my soul. Oh, I used to be all oh, so sad, but now I remember I used to be living in sin. Oh, I tried to be and free, but it wasn't within. Oh, I fooled a lot of friends of mine. They thought I had some peace of mind. Oh, but I didn't have it.
is searching for something he can use anyone to speak to you. And uh, this individual's electric was entitled Being Led by the Spirit of God. And it's not something that's, uh, that's new. I believe every one of us wants to be led by the Spirit of God. And <clears throat> I heard uh, testimonies of different brothers, Brother Stroman, uh, Brother Mims, how they would testify of uh, situations that God would uh, speak to them, be with them, and answer their prayers. But you know, the last time Brother Mims was here, he emphasized for us to go into your closet, your secret place, and start seeking God Amen. for yourself. Because that's the only thing that's going to change. God's the only one that can change the hearts of men. God's the only one that can meet your needs. But I believe that he wants us. And after Brother Mims had left, I was I made it a point that I was going to do that. But I realized that, you know, you can... You can go into that secret place yes. and you can wait and you can feel good about waiting on God. And, right. But it's more than that. It is. It's more than that. I, After uh, getting some w uh, information or wisdom and knowledge, God wants us to talk to Him. Not just when we feel that we have to when we're in a, a, a situation that we don't know what to do. Or God wants us to talk to him. Yes. And this individual was, he gave an example, he says, if your wife goes into the closet and shuts her door, and you go into that room and uh, uh, just to talk with her, and you go there and you're talking with her, then you shut the door. Then you go back maybe 10, 15 minutes later and you, you go talk to your wife again. And he was saying that God doesn't want us just to talk to him when we, you know, when we're in trouble or whatever. I mean, that's when we should be seeking God. Because God is a God that knows what every one of us is going through. But what really spoke to my heart is that God wants, he wants us to talk to him. And when we get up in the morning, Brother Strumman, I remember he said, and this always stayed with me, life is a challenge. You don't know what you're going to face every day. We don't know what we'll, we'll come up against. But God allows, he allows everything to test us to see how we are going to trust him. And if we can, and, and that's my desire is to, is to really trust him. But to trust him, you've got to talk to him. You get, God knows what you're going through, but he wants, he wants us to talk to him. But not only that, to talk to him, he wants us to wait and listen for an answer. And I, I find with me, the hardest thing for us is to wait on God, because we want something right now. It's got to be today. God, you've got to do this today. You know what I need, but I need it right now. But sometimes God doesn't, he doesn't, God works in mysterious ways, like, but you know that I believe that if we will really talk to the Lord, when you get up in the morning, Lord, I don't know what this day is going to bring. I don't know what I'm going to go through. But I know that you're with me. And whatever happens, whatever you're facing, just talk to the Lord. He knows what we're going through. And you'll be surprised. Like, you know, if you just wait. And I, I really thank the Lord for, for that information because that's the desire of my heart. I really want to be led by the Spirit. You know, to go to my closet and pray and then come out and my mind is on everything else. Well, how can God speak to me if my mind is so cluttered with, you know, worrying about this and thinking about that? And so anyway, I just wanted to share that with you. And I pray that the Lord uh, will bless you. Because I believe every one of us has a desire to be led and guided by the Spirit. But it takes, it takes 
takes a commitment. It takes waiting on God. Amen.
Down from his glory, ever living story, my God and Savior came, and Jesus was his name. Born in a manger to his
Sing it if you know it. Jesus. Praise the Lord. Oh, I love him. He's so wonderful. He's so good. I just thank him with all my heart today. I just feel excited. Praise the Lord. The presence of the Lord and the fellowship with you sweet people. Bless your hearts. Oh, dear God, I thank you, Father. Praise the Lord. Sometimes God plants a thought in the mind. And a lot of times when that thought comes, we struggle. We don't know whether it's our thoughts or his thoughts. And when he said that, there were, I went back and, I, and there's times uh, in situations a, a thought will come, but I just don't have thought. And that's what the enemy does. He wants to get you to, oh no, that's not, that's not God, that's, that's, that's just you. But anyway, he said, and I remember Brother Tim McKay said one time when he had come here, he says, if you want to know whether it's the Spirit of God or not, just follow through with that thought. Just to see whether, you'll know for yourself whether it's God or it's, it's you. So that's the experiences I feel that I need to know to recognize the voice of God, to see is it my thoughts or his. Yes. I'm just thankful for uh, the sweet spirit here this morning. 
the stirring that he puts in our hearts. There's something stirring. There's something going on. And with that, I'll turn the service over to Brother Fred. Could all stand, please. Oh, praise the Lord. The Lord is truly is wonderful. But we're here at the end time. And uh, I'm just so thankful uh, what he's been doing. I know Thursday night we had a wonderful time here uh, getting to the subject of the Lord. It just was just a flowing. So I thank God for that. But uh, this morning I uh, have a message that I was asked to uh, touch on again, and I believe there may be some things that we can elaborate on the picture with uh, this morning, so I just thought I'd look in that area. All right, Heavenly Father, as we come before thee, we thank you, Lord, that we can come before thee, Lord. We thank you, Lord, that you're mindful of thy children that are on this planet, Lord. And Lord, as we look into your word, I just pray, Lord, use this vessel of clay as you would see fit. For ask it now in that precious name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. You can be seated this morning. We're going to look this morning concerning the Godhead. I remember when I first started ministering in that first year. We went through quite a while dealing with the Godhead in that time that way back in 97 98 and the Lord had opened had by that hour yes I was thankful that God had an apostle but not because of the apostle but because of the spirit of God that's able to open up the revelation to our understanding and to our mind and God's continually moving on he's not stable his word remains the same, but he can elaborate a little bit more on his word. And I'm thankful that he does, because where would we be without the Lord leading us through? Like I say, say uh, lots of time, I'm thankful I'm not living in the days of Martin Luther. All you would have is just shall live by faith. But then again, the situation was different. Their lives were on the line, and that was very precious to them. And every chance that they could, they would just look to the Lord uh, in looking towards him in what freedom that they were taken out from bondage from the Catholic Church. But now we're not living in the days of Luther. We're living at the end time. The bride is writing the last chapter of the book of Acts. Yes, the book of Acts was as you have it in your scripture there, but the last thing that God does with this church because what he did in the beginning with the five-fold ministry then, there is to be a five-fold ministry here at the end that's supposed to bring us to the place that uh, God knows exactly what we have need of. And so this morning, uh, like I said, I was asked to touch on the Godhead because there are some things being preached that is not quite correct. Now, the Godhead is quite an extensive subject. And 
if we're just carnal, we can take any scripture and point God the Trinity. God is, Jesus is God. All those things. And a preacher can get up and preach saying that that's where it says, look, just read the word. That's carnal in the sense that you can use the word to present something that's not true. But somewhere there's things that when we look at God's word, if they're true, then there has to be a reality on ground that exists that we need to know that it fits what God is. Now, how many know that God is a spirit? He has no form. He has n no shape. And there's a reason why he has no form and no shape. And when we're looking in the, as the things Jesus speaks about and the, in the scriptures concerning the great eternal spirit, we have to see a certain reality. To begin with, in the last 13, 15 years, Science has increased exponentially. Yes, it, after World War II, it did increase. But none like it has been in the last 10 years. And so has it been with the Word of God as well. But in the time we're living in, what great advances that man has learned about the universe. In the days of old, all that man saw was the universe was the planet Earth, the moon, and some stars he would see in the heavens. But that's only our solar system that is part of the Milky Way. And in that Milky Way, just the mil one Milky Way, which is one galaxy, holds a hundred billion stars. One. But as man has advanced, especially with Hubble and so forth, man got to see that there's billions of galaxies that has billions of stars. Now, how, now that's beyond me to comprehend how vast it is. And on, in these last 10, 15 years, man has learned that the universe, not only that it's, it's fixed, it keeps expanding exactly how the Word of God says, that he unfolds them and he goes forth. Now when we're looking at God, the scriptures talks about where's the place of his, of his rest? The heavens can't contain him and the earth is his footstool. Sometimes we, our mind just jump right down to the natural side. We look at the planet and the, earth and the stars and the system we see. That's where God is at. But I'll have you to know what you look with, see with your eyes, the sun, the moon, the stars, the planets, and so forth. That's the natural world. Has nothing to do with the spirit world. God does not live in the natural world. He lives in the spirit world. Now, the reason he lives in the spirit world, he's spirit. Before the, anything was ever created, God planned this whole universe, this whole earth, mankind, down through right up to the eternal age. There's not one thought that he didn't know before he started the Big Bang. That means when your prayer that you prayed this morning is not new to him. He knew that from the foundation right before the earth ever started. Now, why am I going in this direction? We got to get our mind off looking at it in the natural terms of looking at who God is. First of all, if he's everywhere present, nowhere absent, or the universe is in him, whichever flavor you want, you're looking at the natural side of things. But God lives in that spirit realm. 
And in the spirit realm, in the dimension that he lives in, there is a spirit realm, but he lives in a, in a realm that he can't have a form or a shape whatsoever. You can't be everywhere present and know everything if you have a form, whether it be man, that's impossible. We know that right off the bat. But even angels, they cannot be everywhere. And I'm here to tell you this morning, neither is Jesus everywhere. But we're going to see the connection between the Lord Jesus Christ and our great eternal spirit, which is our Heavenly, which is our heavenly Father. There's three things. When you're looking at the Godhead, when you're looking at the relationship between how God interacts with man, how he interacts with his only begotten son, there's three characteristics that God never shares, or it's impossible for any thing that would have a shape to share. God is all-powerful. Him only. And if there's any power that is given to angels, to Jesus, or even to a man, it's because he gives the access to it. Because Jesus said, the things, the work that I do, they're not mine. It's him that does the work. That's my heavenly father. So that power, that omnipotent, or is that the proper way to pronounce it? Omnipotent. Huh? Omnipotent. omnipotent, yes. Only God is omnipotent. So when you start reading things that, what, like the Trinitarians like to say, well, Jesus created the universe and so forth. That is impossible. Knowing all things. Omniscience. He knows everything. Not just in the day that it's, things are happening. He knew it before the foundation of the world was ever being. And the last one, I think this is one that more or less in this hour that we live in, takes on a deeper meaning that he's everywhere. He has to live in that spirit realm and he can't be limited by a body or shape or form because in 1 John when it says that it was the thought, the logo, a thought is not limited by a form or a body. So God is thought but even though God is thought he has a soul. God made man in his likeness and in his image. And so he made us having a spirit and also a soul. Because God speaks about it in terms that he's grieved his soul that, that certain things took place. So God, but the soul... And the spirit, or the intellect of God, it's his thoughts. And when we try to take God and put some sort of form on him, then we have gone too far. We don't understand the great eternal spirit. All right? Now, these are scriptures, just some scriptures here, that talks about all these things concerning God's power, knowing all things, and he's everywhere. We can look in Genesis 1 and 1. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Jesus did not have no role in playing with it. The Trinitarian will tell you, yes, he did. Because he, he was a savior before the foundation of the world. That was in the mind of God. And if Jesus created everything, as they say, then where's the power of the, of the Father? Well, they're all, they're all three one. You just believe it. It's just, it's just a mystery. The mystery is how the devil has deceived mankind. In 
In Isaiah 45 and 24, Thus saith the Lord, my Redeemer, He has formed thee from the womb. I am the Lord that maketh all things, that stretches forth the heavens with the other two. With Jesus. Alone. They ought to read that word, alone. I spread abroad the earth by myself. So God alone has created this. The angels were there because then he, would, he couldn't say he did it alone. But the angels did come into play when the sun and the earth was being formed five billion years ago in the rough. But the creation started 13.8 billion years ago. So there was a lot of elapsed time till planets was actually formed and suns and so forth. This knowledge, man didn't have that 20 years ago. But with things that's been brought forth in our day, we can, you can, they can readily show it to you. Look at it. See the laws of God. Now, Proverb 15 and 3 says, The eyes of the Lord are everywhere, beholding the evils and good. Now, this is the part of the revelation that some have twisted in this hour or have not comprehended the full part. Whose eyes is everywhere? He sees everything. Now, when, on the, when Jesus was baptized and received the Spirit without measure, he does not have that characteristic of God that he knows and sees everything. Because why did, would he say when he was walking on the earth, the words that I speak, they're not mine. The Father told him. The work that's done as I speak it, the Father does that. He didn't say, I did it. I'm the second person or I have been invested because I have a blended spirit. I got all that power now. That is a falsehood. In Psalms 139 and 7, it says, Whither shall I go from, this, from thy spirit? Whither shall I flee from thy presence? If I ascend to heaven, thou art there. If I make my bed in hell, behold, thou art there. If I take wings in the morning and dwell in the uttermost part of the sea, even there shall thy hand lead me, and thy right hand shall hold me. It's just scriptures pointing to the point that God is everywhere. Because he's everywhere, he knows everything. But the thing is, what do we understand what happened in the Jordan River when Jesus was baptized? That's the key of the whole thing there. I'm going to start maybe, well, let's see if I can find it here. When God created man before the planet Earth came into being, before he put man on the Earth, Adam was created in the spirit world, wasn't he? God took a bit of his spirit, and now this is, Adam was formed in the spirit world first before he was placed on the Earth. If you read from Genesis chapter 1 to chapter 2 and 3, you'll see that Adam was created in the spirit world. Now, God took a bit of his spirit, his intellect, and placed it. That's one part that he made Adam with. But that spirit alone cannot exist without having a soul. And so God, from his image, which is his soul, his identity, he gave man an identity which is called the soul. Now that spirit that Adam was given 
Was it that born again spirit? No. It was the spirit of life, yet in the spirit world. Are we understanding this part? And so in the spirit world, Adam was there for a long time because he was created on the sixth day and God only puts him at the beginning of the eighth day. So he got to see a whole lot of things that was taking place on the earth. Now God puts man on the earth. He's that first Adam. Now Jesus is the second Adam. He was created without sin. But he too, when he was born on, in Bethlehem, was the spirit in him, the spirit of the great eternal spirit, that the, the born again experience? No, it's the spirit of life that was there. All right? So now we have man, how we've seen him in the garden, how God now gives him a body. Yes, Adam was created out of the death of the earth, but Jesus was created by placing an egg in Mary in the womb, which was of the Holy Ghost. But nevertheless, he's the second Adam, not the second God. He's not God when, when he was born. First of all, he didn't have no more power than, than the first Adam had. And if the first Adam had not sinned, he would be in the position where Jesus is today. Now what happened when we call that new birth? Well, before I go there, here's some things that Jesus can never be and God cannot do either. God only is invisible. Jesus said so. God only sees the heart. Satan does not see the heart. No one else sees the heart. Only God only sees the heart. And Jesus does not see the heart neither except the spirit that when he was in filled with the spirit, him giving access and showing that is the heart. Are you following? Because if you take him before the birth, before the being baptized and receiving the Spirit without measure, Jesus could no more read the heart than anyone else could. Only God sees in secret. He's the only one. He knows the heart. He's everywhere. He knows the secrets, even the intent of our thought of any human vessel. He can know that, even though there's 7 billion people on the planet, not every 7 billion is Christian, I understand that. But he knows the thought and the intent of everyone. Because he has no form, he can do that. Because he's all-powerful, omnipotent, and all-knowing, and he's everywhere, he has that authority and that power in him to do such. But God has no blood. If he did, he'd have a form. And God cannot die, period. Jesus is visible. But God wants to use his only begotten son to put on display the attributes he has in his son, but even when he puts, takes his attribute to display it in his son, does not make the son have full access to everything that God is of those three characteristics that God, that man or angels or no one can share. Jesus shed his blood for us. It was pure, unadulterated blood. He was not born in sin, which is different than you and I. He is, he is a high priest. God is never a high priest, the great eternal spirit. Jesus is our lawyer and our mediator. Now, having moved down to that area, now here's what I want to show here.
Jesus will never be any one of those three. Well, you're, you're destroying the, the understanding I have of the Godhead. You're not listening. When the Father, Spirit, merge or blend it with His Spirit, it did not give Jesus these three automatically that He have it in His fullness. But when they, when He was, when the Father came into Him, Jesus has access to those, which is different than saying He has them all. He hears every prayer. And if that were be so, then the one that you say that he hears every prayer, in Matthew chapter 6, I believe around verse 6 or 9, Jesus says, when you pray, don't pray to me. Why? Because he can't hear everybody's prayer. That's why. Pray to your Father. That can see in secret your thoughts. He knows everything. But how can Jesus, then the thought comes, that I can see the mind just spinning around. Well, how can he lead the church? The Father shows him what is needful to lead the church. He's not your personal, he is our Savior in one respect, but he's not there to address everybody's thoughts and everybody's problems. He's like the high priest of the Old Testament. He didn't go around accepting all the sacrifice of every Jew in every corner of the nation of Israel so he could be all in all. He was representing the nation and the blood that was placed on the throne was representing the nation. There was individual priests that accounted for those things. But when we bring it to the New Testament, Jesus is the high priest. He's there in glory He's there to represent the bride and the believers. Now, if Jesus can hear every prayer, because Jesus lives in me, they'll play on that, on that thought. Yes, he lives in you in which way? By revelation. Because why? The Father wants what was placed into Jesus to be placed into you and I. And as... Jesus is now has his spirit blended with the, or if you want to, born again with the spirit of God. It's his spirit of life with the spirit of God that becomes one. The two minds did not blend. But the mind of the son was so in subjection to the father that the father gave him power, access to his thoughts, that it was needful for him to do his work. When he said, all power in heaven and earth is given unto me, he meant concerning salvation. Now we come to the point. Did Jesus have a form? Yes, he did. He's the second Adam. How many ears does he have? Two. Eyes? Two. Mouth? One. And because the Spirit came into him, by portraying the revelation of the Godhead, that he knows and hears everything of everybody, it's error. He has access to the Father that does have that, and as the Father gives it to him for directing the church, he does. Because when Jesus was born again, or that blended spirit came into him, remember, he said, Father, make them one like we are one. We are blended also with the spirit of our Heavenly Father. How many of you know that? And you're here right now. How many thoughts can you hear? How many minds can you read? Oh, but he had the spirit without measure. 
He had without measure access to it as the Father directs him. Remember, it's not him taking that power and then I, I'm going to look and see what's going on in the church. That's wrong. It's the Father that brings it to him because he knows nothing except what the Father shows him. It's not the reverse. Well, I don't mean to speak loud, but... Now let's take a little step, because I remember in times past, I know when I was dealing with the Godhead way back in 97, 98, Jesus does not hear every prayer, and I put it this way, if every Sunday... Every saint, whether white robes, whatever the case may be, even though whoever would pray to him, he gave two minutes for that one Sunday. In our time frame, it would take 20 years to give the answer for that one Sunday. It shows us an impossibility. And when you go down that road... It's just Satan has camouflaged the same things he's done with Santa Claus. How can Santa Claus know what every child wants and where to deliver them in one night? Is that reality? Then no more than Jesus can know every thought of everyone. Because we see in some scripture, only the Father knows the heart only. Huh? That's one of those three attributes that you see here that God cannot give to someone because in order to, to have those three attributes, you'd, you, you would not have a body, a form. And if we're going to be like him, and if you'll say, well, maybe when we get to heaven and get our new body, we're going to be like him. Are you, are you going to hear all everybody talking at the same time? That's wrong. That's why in, the, in Ephesians chapter 3, verse 17, it says that Christ dwells in your heart by faith. Revelation of the characteristic that's in him is what the Father wants to mold in me. And who's doing the work? It's the Father's doing all the work. He's redeeming us through Christ, but he's not saying, Christ, you do everything. No, he's, when we receive the Comforter, who is the Comforter? That's the Spirit of God. And to show that, what I just said in Ephesians, chapter 3, verse 17, that Christ dwell in you by faith is by revelation. Then you go to the Gospels of John, And he speaks in terms in this way. That the comforter will come, he'll take of mine and show it to you. Now if Jesus was actually in you, you wouldn't need the comforter to show it to you. He would be shown it. You see where that's going. So Jesus... When he, when he was born again, born again and filled with the Spirit, or blended with the Spirit of God, he has access to those three attributes of God that God cannot share. He can give access to it to his only begotten Son. Because if you make Jesus, he has those, then he can be everywhere. But I thought the Scripture told me that he sits on the throne atoning for us and being our lawyer. Well, he can't be everywhere as if he's doing that. Now, I'm going to give a, a natural example. Or, before I go there, he says, I and the Father are one. It's because the Spirit has merged, but that don't make Jesus has all that power that the Father has. He has access to it. And the same one says, Father, make them one as we are one. Do you have all power? You have access to that power as 
It's just to be like Jesus. When he speaks, he does the work, it will happen. Now, I know Brother I like the, the phrase that Brother Jackson coined. He that is your heavenly father will never be your brother. And he that is your brother will never be your heavenly father. And if I say Jesus lives in me, what's going to happen to your Jesus in that revelation, in that manner, when you come to the eternal age? When he gives back to the father, and the father is all in all. That don't fit, see? Oh, but I can use scripture that shows that Jesus is in me. He's in you because of the characteristic God uses that as an example that we are to have applied to us. There's a difference. Now, this morning, in Ephesians chapter 5, verse 31, it talks about a man and a woman that in marriage they become one. How many believe that? Well, it's there in the Bible, yes. But are we going to read it carnally? You become your wife and your wife becomes you? Is that what is implied? You know it's not. Now, granted, this is a naturally illustration which in a to a point you can use as a type to represent what spiritually is taking place between the Lord and I that we are one there's two minds involved but the two minds has one and the self same purpose so when the father came into Jesus Christ with the fullness Jesus and the father has the same purpose same work. But there's two minds involved. The two minds were not joined. Now when we take it to the earthly setting concerning a man and a woman, your mind doesn't get joined to your wife, although sometimes your wife knows what you're thinking. And I don't want to go too far there. I know it's pleasant thing. But they are one because there's an offspring that is part of each one. And each has their own mind. Sometimes a man can be stubborn. Sometimes a wife can be stubborn too. Sometimes we can both be loving. Praise God. <laughs> All right. But I'm just trying to show you this morning. Here's a natural example that the two become one. Why? Because it's of a same purpose there is to create an offspring. But when you and I are joined to the Lord, and when Jesus was joined to the Lord in that new birth, they become one in purpose. And that relationship, when Jesus walked on earth, never changed, although he had that for the fullness from when he was baptized by John, he says, I do nothing except what the Father shows me. He does the work. Or he gives me his word to speak. Now to me, that makes a whole lot of more sense that you can fit this picture in the whole scripture into the Bible. Now there's another part. As Jesus was a few years after he was in fill with the, the Spirit, he was talking to the Pharisees and the scribes. And in one place, you'll find that in John chapter 5, verse 58. Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, 
I say unto you, before Abraham was, I am. Jesus did not exist in the prehistoric time or times past. It is the Father that had been telling him what to do all along, now is using his lips and speaking directly. It's the Father speaking. Before Abraham was, I am. He was that great I am. But it's because the Father is in the Son, and the Son was willingly to let his vessel speak those words. We can go to doubt, Doubting Thomas. Jesus was speaking about the Father. And Thomas was like some natural thinking people. Well, show me the Father. He wants to see something physically or something that he can put his eyes on and catch naturally. And then Jesus says, have I not been so long with you? You don't know who I am. That was not the Son. That was the Father speaking through the Son, telling him those things. Are you still with me this morning? Yes. So getting back, these things, well, actually, I should put the other one. These three attributes, because we are born again, have access to the one that knows everything, that can do everything, that is everywhere. Well, praise the Lord. Uh, to me, there comes a deeper... What, as I looked at it again, yes, those are three things that the Father has that Jesus can't have. But he has access to it as the Father uses him for it. And he had, without limitation... To use his only begotten son. To you and I, there's limitation. We don't always have our mind on the, on the great eternal spirit. We're not obedient and listening all the time. Matter of fact, uh, it might be a, a 2080 split. You guess which one you're using. I know I'm pleasanting again. And so Jesus will never be those things because he cannot be everywhere present. In order to that, again, I want to state that again. In order to fulfill those three attributes of omni, omnipotent, omniscience, and omnipresent, you can't have a body or no form whatsoever. And because Jesus in heaven still has a form, because we're going to be like him. And if, we're going to, if Jesus can be everywhere, when we get to heaven, we're going to be everywhere too, wouldn't it? Where does that go? Where does that bring you? Nowhere. In John 16 and verse 25, here's Jesus saying, These things I have spoken unto you in Proverbs. But the time cometh when I shall no more speak to you in Proverbs, but I shall show you plainly the Father. And that day... You shall ask in my name. I say not that I will pray the Father for you. So, if you look at Matthew chapter 6, verse 6 in that area, that's why Jesus said, when you pray, go in your closet so you're not disturbed. It doesn't mean that you don't have to go in a physical closet. But pray to, he said, he didn't say pray to me because I'm in you. Pray to the Father. Why? He sees everything. He knows the heart of, every, only he sees the heart of everyone. That, to me, it's as plain as, plain as a nose on your face. Now, I found, when I was looking on the internet, I found this little part here was someone was a mathematician. It says, God, now for you that, that uh, don't know algebra, I'll just explain it a little bit. God is equal, 
And this M turned sideways means the sum of, the sum of eternity forward and eternity past, and E means all the energy. So God is the sum of all things past and all things future. <laughs> He's the sum of everything. Well, no, don't use that mathematical uh, equation. It's just I found it kind of funny at the time. So, And so, therefore, no, I don't want to get that. There is another subject that I want to touch. Maybe I'll touch it uh, another time. I'll save that for another time, but time is fleeting right now. But I believe we brought, now there's a whole lot of other things that we can can bring into the, into scripture of concerning what we call the Godhead. Jesus is the only visible expression of what the Godhead is. So when the Comforter comes and he talks about Christ being placed in you, he's using that as a reference of the things that sink Christ. He wants to see you and I. Yes, the Spirit of God and the Spirit of Jesus is in that new birth are blended. But remember, you are blended too if you've been born again. So where are you going to take that? And how many can see that when you and I Sometimes I remember in the past, well, we must be born again. Is it the Spirit of God that comes, or is it what happens there, or where, where it's all related? Right. So it's that Spirit of life that He's given you, like the Spirit of life He gave Adam in the spirit world, which is the Spirit of life, which is not the Holy Ghost, except we are into fallen nature here. But when that Spirit of God that is that great eternal Spirit fuses with your Spirit of life, now you become one and the self-same Spirit with Him. That's why we all have one Father. Jesus is not your Father. He's our High Priest now. He's our advocate. He's going to be judge. He's going to be king. But in the eternal age, he's going to be our elder brother. I don't know about you, but just seeing these things opens up a deeper understanding of the Godhead for this hour. It's what the devil attacked first in the early age. And there's still some remnant of it, of it today that is twisted. Now God is able to open this up. That don't mean, well, everyone that may say things differently is wrong. They may only have come to that understanding. But this is an hour we need to see a bit more clearly. In the days of Brother Branham, you have some of the Branham line that says, well, Jesus, because Brother Bram said Jesus is God, they believe that the only begotten Son is God himself. Well, that's not what Brother Branham had in mind. And if some of the people of Branham are listening in, look up that sermon he preached, the revelation of Jesus Christ. He preached it right. But if he's talking here and there, well, Jesus is God in his mind. Yes, Jesus is the name of the Father, but he wasn't referring to the Son as being God himself. It's a time we need to... Now, some, a lot, have not waked up from that period of time. They're still saying, well, we don't care what Brother Jackson said. Jesus is God. Brother Brown said so. You are carnal. You need the spirit of revelation. He'll open up the picture. Because if you go down that road, there's a lot of scripture that won't fit with you. This is not something you preach to novice. But yet, there's a lot of young people here that sees it. 
It's not the years that count. It's how we allow the Holy Spirit to look, to be sincere and actually look at the picture of the Godhead. Oh, well, praise the Lord. There's a whole lot of other scriptures we could bring in, but I got two or three pages, but just reading too many scriptures is too many things. But it's to capture the, the picture of what's going on. Because if we have something wrong, other scriptures won't fit. So Christ is in me by revelation. But I'm born again of the spirit of the great eternal spirit. I'm not born again of the spirit of Jesus. But it is the same relationship that Jesus has with the Father that I have with my heavenly Father. And with Jesus as well. Because we are all one part of the body. Well, Lord, no. It's the best. It's not something easy that you can just dwell into. And you can get, a preacher can get up and use all kinds of scriptures and things, but if you don't have the right picture, that's where the trouble comes in. If I went to the Trinity Pentecost, they can use all the scriptures to prove their point. If I go to the Branham people that believe that Jesus is God himself, they can use scripture to try to prove their point. But there's a lot of loose, loose ends they can't explain. But I'm thankful in the hour we live in. God is still opening up a little bit more and more. So never lose sight when you're looking in the scripture that it is he that is invisible that has no form, only he's omnipotent, omnipotent, sorry, omniscience and omnipresent. But he gives access to it. Jesus has unlimited access to it as the Father directs him. You and I have a very limited access to it. And because we say, I say you have access to it, unless he allows the access, you're just going to be there. But when he initiates like Jesus, now you speak these words, and I will do that work. Isn't that what happened to the believer that God uses someone for healing, miracles, and so forth? Now granted, there's the fakes. Because they've done it once, Come here, we'll pray for you, and then we'll slap you on the forehead, and you'll receive it. And, and if you don't receive it, then it's your fault, not mine. We're gone past that. I remember those things in the early days. But you can't fool me again with that. I'm, that word will become a stable menu. For us to walk on through. It is God's measuring stick that, that will line up every other revelation that comes along with it as well. And I'm thankful for the Lord. And uh, praise the Lord. Let's just stand at this time. Heavenly Father, I thank you once again, Lord, for what you've done. Lord, use the word that was spoken as you would see fit. Lord, it's only your spirit, Lord, that can make us see and understand. No words that a man can say can open up the picture, but, Lord, it's you. And I thank you, Lord, this morning. In Christ Jesus' name I pray. In case someone still has a need, we'll have the musicians to come, and then we'll dismiss after that. You can be seated.
pray to Jesus, and there was a whole lot of things that I was told, and I was just doing that. And I reached a point that everybody around me said I was saved. And I had questions in my own mind about that. I had gone through everything they said and done everything that they did. And one day I was sitting reading his word, and the Spirit of God came to me and witnessed me. That's it. And I knew that I was saved because the word of God came right off the pages and came yeah. into my heart. That church taught me the Trinity. And I tried my best on a human level to discuss it with them and find out what they were saying. And I was up against a brick wall talking. So I stopped talking. And for 25 years, I believed the Trinity. Because they told me to. But I, I had a friend. Yes. <laughs> I had a friend. Yes. And I read it. And I studied it. And I communed with my, that spirit that spoke to me. My sins were forgiven. I communed with that spirit when I was reading the word of God. Don't forsake it. I'm sorry, I can't add to what Fred said. I'm just testifying this morning. But one day, after 25 years, and I, uh, uh, oh, we go there. Okay? I was reading Ephesians chapter 1. Paul said, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. I took my pen. I wrote in the margin of that Bible, Jesus had a God. Jesus had a God. That's what I wrote. I wasn't a preacher. I taught him and listened to Fred by that time when he was preaching on the Godhead because that's one of the things that he dealt with when I came into the church. Okay? But I wrote, Jesus had a God. And I could mention a lot of scripture. I just want to mention one more. John, where it tells of Jesus' resurrection. And Mary Magdalene met him. Yes. And he said, don't yeah. touch me. Mm -hmm. For I have not yet ascended to my father. And then he went a little further, and he said to my father and to your father, to my God and to your God. I have the same God Jesus did. Amen. And I have the same father Jesus did. And I have a relationship with him by the same spirit that was in Jesus Christ. And I would die for him.
knows everything. And I'm just blown away. And I'm so thankful for that. And I'm thankful for the truth to be here. The Trinity, I don't understand. It never made sense to me. There was never a purpose. Like, what would be the purpose of, if, if Jesus was God, what would be the purpose of him dying? What would be the purpose of free will? It just didn't make any sense to me at all. But anyways, I just want to thank the Lord. I just really, really want to thank him. appreciate your testimony, Brother Roger. It's the life, the word comes alive, and God knows. That's how he leads us. You become alive with every word that he gives you or me. Praise the Lord. Let's just stand this time. I'm going to ask Brother Dale to dismiss us in a word of prayer this morning.
Yeah, we'll meet again. God bless each one. Amen.